Yo, 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 what's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. It's Daniel Taylor with Audio Sounds once again. And today I'm gonna be showing you a trick that I use for my samples that will double your output and basically make you be able to make two samples out of one. So you can make samples quicker and you can speed up your workflow. It helps to be able to make as many samples as possible because obviously the more samples you make, the more you can send out and the higher chance you have of somebody actually using it getting it placed and this method is good because it'll help you make uh, more samples a lot faster without rushing them or feeling like you're sacrificing the quality of the sample anyway as usual i'm going to go through everything and hopefully you guys learn something new um, the links in the description will be for all the free kits that we have on the site don't forget to subscribe and let's get right into it so i'm gonna go ahead and just play uh, the original sample and then break down everything i did to make it Yeah, as you can hear for this sample, the sample has piano, strings, and vocals. And for this method, I like to use samples that are relatively simple. And usually this method sounds good with samples that have like piano or strings or vocals. Um, if you're using like synth sounds, it can work, but sometimes it can sound a little weird. But anyway, I'm gonna break down this sample and then show you guys the method. So the first thing I did for the sample is I pulled up Noir Pure and Contact and I use this in concert preset, um, just a good sounding piano. And I laid down this pretty simple chord progression. So for this sample, we're gonna be in D minor. And as you can see, the root note is at D. And all I did is I layered the root note. So you have four notes that are all D and then A. And then I just added some notes in between that kind of fill out the space and it sounded good with the melody. It kind of arpeggiates up and down. And at the end, we have kind of a, a two note chord with C and F. And then I just made another chord right here that goes down to A sharp minor. And as you can see, I did the same thing, just layering the root note with a D note and an A sharp, again, all the way up here, adding some notes in between and then having um, a two note chord at the end. And then what I did is I just copied that over. And the only difference between these two is that at the very end, I made the root note go down from A sharp to A. So I'm gonna go ahead and play how that sounds. Yeah, pretty simple, um, nothing too crazy on that. For the effects, I added an EQ to take out the low end, and then I added a little dip in the low mids and then boosted the mids a little bit. I added uh, Abbey Road Vinyl Stereo to make it sound a little bit more vintage. And all I did with this is I just, uh, I turned the noise off and I put the um, wow in the flutter just to make it sound, again, a little bit more vintage, a little older. And then I added a uh, delay. And then this is my favorite reverb to use on pianos, plug-in ROM with the Canyon Piano preset. That's it for the effects on the piano. And then as you can see in the arrangement, I have a second part for where the verse would be. This is where the hook would be, the verse. And I just have a second part where I took out some of the notes that are in between. So it's really just the chords, no notes in between. So just kind of like, just a little variation for the, uh, where the verse would be. So it's a little bit simpler. The next thing that I did is I went into contact and I just opened up Infinitones and I grabbed this luminescence preset, it's basically a pad. And what I did is I just copied over the chords from the, uh, from the piano. So I just copied over the same exact thing. And then I took out some of the, um, the lower notes. And then what I did is I added a halftime to that and an EQ just to take out um, a lot of the lower frequencies. And I just layered that with the piano. So this is what that sounds like. So that's kind of in the background of the sample underneath the, underneath the piano. And as you can see in the arrangement, I have the first part just rendered out as an audio file. And then a second part where it's pitched up. Um, for the second part of the hook. So once I had the pad, the sample, I just opened up Arcade and I just searched vocals and I found this hard mode kit right here. And what I did is I just added one note throughout the whole sample. The vocal sample sounded pretty good and it's kind of in the background of the sample. Um, this is what that sounds like. They're really repetitive, nothing too crazy, just one note in Arcade. Uh, the only thing I did is I made sure to put it to um, D minor. And then for the effects, I just took out a lot of the low end with an EQ, and then I added uh, some reverb to that. And then again, I used Arcade, and I used the same kit right here. 
and I added kind of another vocal. And for this one, I use one of the effects that are built into Arcade. Um, any of the sharp notes will add an effect. So for this one, I have a vocal, again, just really repetitive um, with this effect on it. And this is what that sounds like. This is what it would sound like without the effect on it. So the effect kind of makes it just repeat. Um, and I thought it sounded good with the sample. And the only effect I added on this was just an EQ to take out a lot of the high end and a lot of the low ends. Cause again, I wanted this um, vocal to kind of just be like in the background. Next thing that I did is I added a, an accent from Arcade. Um, and again, just one note, really simple, um, using the same kit. And this is what that sounds like. Again, really repetitive, um, nothing too crazy. It's really like a synth sound. Um, and I use it for the second part of the hook, as you can see right here. And for the effects on that, I just added an EQ to take out some of the really high end. Um, I added a halftime at 50% and a shaper box to pan it back and forth. So it goes from left to right. And then I think I use, yeah, so some of these um, effects that are built into Arcade, I used this. Um, this is like a reverb, this is like a delay. I just added both of those. Next thing that I added was a cello from the Contact Factory Library. So this is what it looks like. Just a cello preset. Um, and I just kind of added a like a lead melody um, with the cello. So this is what that sounds like. And for the effects on that, I just added an EQ to take out a lot of the low end. And then I added J37 Stereo. This plugin's good for making sounds sound more like vinyl or vintage. Um, I use this electric guitar preset. It adds a little bit of delay too. Um, and I just added some wow and flutter to it. Last thing that I did is I added a bass um, from Infinitones, Child's Play preset. And I just followed the root note of the sample. Um, this is what that sounds like. And for the effects on that, I just added Decapitator to add some distortion with this beefy preset. Yeah, it's pretty much everything for the original sample that I made. Um, and all I did was I just structured it out with the stems at the end and then rendered it out as an audio file. And that was it for the first sample. So here I have the second sample that I've made with the original sample. And as you can see, I have the sample that I just showed brought in here. And what you want to do is you want to find parts of the sample that um, sound good and don't have too much going on. I um, mean, you want to find parts that don't have the bass. If you're doing this method, basically what we're going to be doing is chopping up the sample and turning it into something completely new. And if you're chopping up the bass, it can sound kind of weird. So I went in and I found two parts that I liked and I just chopped it out. I cut it like this, I got the bass. So I just chopped it like this, took out the parts that I wanted. And I went here and I hit consolidate track from track start and it just renders it out as an audio file on its own. So it's completely separate. So now I have something completely new and it was really quick to make. And it, honestly, it's really fun because again, you can get really creative with it and this will really speed up your workflow because you basically have a whole new sample right here just out of something that you already made. You're basically recycling your sample and making something new out of it. You're sampling your sample. So once I had that separated, I just had it as an audio file like this. And this is the part that I cut out. So basically just both parts of the hook um, is what I cut out. You have the first part that has the vocals and then the second part with that synth sound from Arcade. And then what I did is I opened up Fruity Slicer um, and it looks like this. And then you just drag in the sample. So I took it, dragged it in, and then I pitched it up five semitones. And when I'm doing this method, I usually like to pitch the sample up anywhere from like two to uh, like seven semitones turn the attack up a little bit the decay up a little bit and then you're going to go here and set it to slice at beat and then once you've done that you can basically take each of these parts and you can play them individually and you can basically rearrange the sample so i just kind of played around with the different notes and came up with something that i liked and this is what that sounds like So as you can hear, it kind of combines the first part of the hook and the second part of the hook. So you have the vocals and the synth sound. So it basically makes something completely new out of the sample. And I like this method a lot because you can get really creative with the different notes and you can basically make it sound completely different. And then all I did is I rendered that out as an audio file. So I have that right here. And then what I did is I sped it up to 152 BPM. So we went from 146 to 152. Um, and then I put it to its own mixer track. I ended up pitching it back down three semitones. So we 
went from D minor to E minor. I didn't add any effects to it. And then the next part that I did is I took another part from the sample. So I went into where the verse would be, where the kind of the vocals cut out and it's really just the piano and the strings, I think. I just added a second part to this sample. So the next thing that I did is I took a separate part from the original sample. I went into where the verse would be, where it's a little bit more simple and a lot of things are taken out. And I did the same thing with that part. So here's the second part that I took from the original sample. You can hear it's really just the piano. I did that because I wanted to add a second part to this sample. So what I did is I just took that and I dragged it in to another instance of Fruity Slicer. And all I did is I copied over the same pattern right here, copied that over to this second part of the sample that I took. And this is what that sounds like. And then again, I just rendered that out as an audio file. So now we have two separate parts that are different from the original sample. So we have like a hook and then a verse for the second sample. So once you've done that, and once you have something new from the um, original sample that you made, usually what I do is I just add kind of some simple things like a pad or like some accents and stuff like that to add to the sample to make it even more different from the original. But what I did is I opened up Analog Lab and I grabbed a pad and I just added this really simple pad in the background. Again, following the, ro the root note of the sample. And this is what that sounds like. And then I just copied that over. For effects, I just added an EQ to take out the low end. And as you can see here, I have the first part of the hook um, and then the second part where it is pitched down um, for the verse right here. And then, like I said, I like to add some accents or just something different to make it sound a little bit different from the original. So I grabbed two different accents and I just added them um, for variation throughout the sample. Um, these accents, I think, are from Synth Diaries 1 by Loner. Um, and I just made sure to fit the key to um, the sample. So I pitched it down to E minor and this is what that sounds like. And then again, another accent, pitch it down to E minor and this is what that sounds like. And then I just added a white noise texture um, kind of in the background this is what that sounds like. Some really simple vinyl uh, white noise just in the background. And then lastly, I added a bass. It's just a one shot bass. Um, this is what it sounds like. So just a synth bass. And I followed the root note of the sample. Um, this is what that sounds like. And then again, added Decapitator with this beefy preset to add some distortion to it. So once I had everything that I wanted, I just arranged it out. So I have the first part of the hook um, that goes into the verse with a bunch of different variations and then back into like a pre-hook. Um, and then I just copied that over, took out the bass for the second half, put the stems at the end as always, and just arranged it how I always arrange my samples with the first part that has the bass, second part without the bass, and then the stems at the end. That was pretty much it for the uh, second sample. I'm gonna just play the final sample Like I said, this method really helps speed up your workflow because you can take a sample that you've already made, basically sample it, turn it into something completely new, and you can just add some really simple elements to make it stand out and sound more different from the original. And you can basically make two samples out of one, speeding up your workflow. Anyways, I hope you guys learned something new, took something away from this video. Um, links will be in the description for all the free kits. And don't forget to subscribe. I'll see you in the next one.